teacher Cheryl here with Little and Pierce County. We always start everything we do with gratitude. So we want to say thank you to our sponsors and our partners for making it possible for us to come together and listen to a really special story and do a really fun activity. Today we're going to learn how to make a simple kite. And this is how you say kite in sign language. You make a K hand and you make something up in the air and the K is like the tail of the kite. I'm going to show you how to make a really simple kite and then we're going to read a story that will help inspire us for how we want to decorate our kite and make it beautiful as it flies through the air. This simple kite is called a paper bag kite. So all you need is a paper bag, like a lunch bag size paper bag. You can like try and do it with a bigger one. I don't know whether it would work or not, but you could try. You need a little bit of tape to start and a hole punch and a string. And that is the way to make the kite. And then we can talk about ways that you might want to decorate it. But what you want to do is you'll take a little bit of the tape and you'll put it on the edge of the kite right where you want to punch your hole. And that will just keep the string from ripping the paper of the bag and pulling out too soon. So see, I made a little bit, you can see how it's shiny there and the, the tape will make it stronger. So there's one hole and then a little tape on the other side, right across from where you did that hole as much as you can. You can kind of look and see. And then another hole. And then all you have to do is tie your string, thread your string through the hole, which for some of us is hard and for some of us is easy, but it's a really good skill to learn how to thread things through other things and fit things through. And just like that, voila, you have a kite that you can run behind you outside and fly around. So that's the beginning of it. Now I'm going to read you a story that can help inspire you about how you might like to decorate your kite. So this story I really like because it's about kites and the person who wrote it says that this is a story that his father told him happened to him when he was a little boy. Have you ever heard stories from your family about when your grown-ups were little? This one is called Henry and the Kite Dragon. It's by Edward Hall and illustrated by William Lowe. And this story is so good about learning about other people and about the learning how to listen to what's going on and how to solve problems by caring about how other people feel. My name is Henry Chu. I am eight years old. I live in a place called Chinatown in New York City. Chinatown is very small, pretty much just three tiny streets, all narrow and crowded, like a village in China would be. Doyer Street is the littlest and crookedest street in Chinatown. It has a place to buy tasty little dumplings to have with our tea. I like the ones with shrimp. My friend Thelma Fung likes the ones with sweet roast pork. Mott Street is where my family lives. Our building is the tallest of all. From one side, you can see all the way down to Pell Street, and on the other, you can look right down into the next neighborhood. It's called Little Italy. Oh, look at those tall buildings. Have you ever been to a big, big city before? In Chinatown, New York, there are lots of things to do for fun. You can buy sweet pickled onions. You can watch Mr. Eng sort mail at the littlest post office in New York. It's only eight feet wide. But my favorite thing to do in Chinatown is fly kites. 
And on the top floor of my building lives a man who makes the best kites of all, the best kites in the whole wide world. His name is Mr. Chin, but we kids call him grandfather. It's a sign of respect for his age. When he was a kid in China, everyone made kites, but his kites were the biggest and the prettiest. They flew the highest and always won first prize in all the contests. He is little and old now and always wears a sweater with holes and worn out brown slippers, but we, he still likes to climb the stairs to the roof and fly one of his famous kites shaped like a butterfly or a caterpillar or his specialty, a big, beautiful dragon. Wow, look at that kite. My friends Thelma Fung and I get to help Grandfather Chin make them. One time we made a butterfly from broken up packing crates. The body was made from cardboard. We used the big pot of rice paste that Grandfather Chin boiled on the stove to stick on sheets of newspaper to make wings. Grandfather Chin painted on bright orange stripes and deep purple spots and glued on glittery gold foil and blue polka dots. Thelma Fung and I thought it was the best, most wonderful kite we had ever seen. Did you hear how he was making his kites out of things that he could find and reusing things to make something beautiful? Up on the roof, it was a perfect kite flying day, a brisk breeze, not too cold, and sunshine broken up by clouds. But Grandfather Chin was not only a great kite maker, he was a great kite flyer. Slowly, he let the butterfly rise up and out and over until it caught the wind and just took off. Our butterfly seemed alive. Look at over here, what do you see? A pigeon flew by and in a flash, Grandfather Chin made the kite chase the little bird as if our big, beautiful butterfly were going to eat him up. Oh, he's playing a game with the bird, huh? The pigeon flew away as fast as his wings could carry him. Our new friend, the butterfly, sailed over the building behind us and paused over the park in Little Italy a block away. But then something happened. A kid named Tony Guglioni saw our kite whiz a rock flew past our beautiful butterfly, whoosh, zing, two more went by, one of them just nicking the wing, then smash, crash, rip, a whole hail of rocks and pebbles tore through the butterfly's wings, trembling as if in pain, the water, wonderful butterfly sank slowly to the ground. Tony and his friends tore the kite to bits. They ripped it and stomped on it and shook their fists. Tony always made trouble for us Chinese kids, and that's why we never went into the park when his friends were there. Uh-oh. Hmm. Grandfather Chin just watched, never uttering a word. Finally, he turned to Thelma Fung and me and said, well, we'll just have to go and make another one. The next day, we three made a caterpillar kite. Wow, look at that. It was long and sleek, painted bright yellow with red spots. It had a face that made it look like it was surprised to be flying in the clouds at the end of a string. Grandfather Chin made the caterpillar chase its own tail. He made it wave like the ocean. He made it squiggle and spiral. This time, two pigeons appeared and Grandfather Chin sent the giant caterpillar racing after them. They were frightened and shot away from the kite, but then it happened again. Whoosh! went a rock. And zing went another. Then Tony Guglioni tied a long string to a stone and threw it right over the caterpillar's string like a lasso. Now Tony and his friends reeled in our beautiful caterpillar and once again our kite was stomped to pieces. Let's go beat them up, I shouted. Uh-oh, do you think that's a good idea? Let's get all our friends and go down there and fight them. But Grandfather Chin just shook his head. I have a better idea. But yes, get all of your friends. Oh, good, I thought. Tony and his friends will leave us alone now once and for all. 
Soon, all of our Chinatown buddies were climbing the stairs to Grandfather Chin's apartment. Everett Singh, Francis Ang, Walter Hong, Constance Ling, and others. But when we got there, we couldn't believe our eyes. Pots of paste boiled on the stove. Old wooden crates were everywhere, and so were stacks of colorful rice paper. Come on, come on, Grandfather Chin said. We have a kite to make. Make a kite? Now? But what could we do? After all, it was Grandfather Chin, so we rolled up our sleeves. That day's kite was a dragon. It was huge, stretching from one end of the kitchen to the other and back again. Who knew how long it was? It was covered in dazzling red rice paper and had two six feet long streamers for ta a tail. They were made of gold rice paper. Wow, are you getting some ideas for decorating a kite? At, the last, at last, the dragon kite was ready. It was so long, it took all of us to carry it to the roof. This kite is so big and so beautiful that they wouldn't dare throw rocks at it, Grandfather Chin said. Everyone respects dragons, you'll see. There was another pigeon flying around, just one lonely bird all by himself. We wanted the kite to chase it, but before we could even get the dragon in the air, Tony and his friends started throwing rocks again. Do you think those kids are just mean? I wonder how this is going to turn out. That's when I got really mad. Come on, I shouted and led my friends down eight flights of stairs and out onto the street, leaving Grandfather Chin and the giant dragon kite on the roof alone. Wait, Grandfather Chin called after us. Where are you going? But we kids kept on walking right down Mott, Mott Street and marching to the park where Tony and his friends were waiting. Chinese kids never went into the park when Tony Gugliani was there, but we did that day. At first, Tony and his friends just stood there with their mouths open. There was silence for a minute. Stop it, I yelled, Tony. He was stunned. Get out of our park, he finally sputtered. No! You get out. No, you, you. We were here first. We were all lined up, breathing hard, ready to start fighting when all of a sudden the sky went dark. A big splash of color seemed to stretch across the entire sky. It was so big it blotted out the sun like a giant cloud. Grandfather Chin had launched the dragon by himself. For a moment, everyone in the park was quiet as the gigantic creature hung in the air above our building. And then it started to dance. It made a slow curve. Everyone said, ooh. It made a majestic swing. Everyone said, ah. And then that pigeon flew by. The dragon darted after the little bird as if it were going to swallow it up in one bite. Stop it! Stop it, Tony screamed. That's my pigeon. Huh? We all said, your pigeon? What are you talking about? And that's when I began to understand. In Little Italy, they kept pet pigeons, homing pigeons, in cages on their roofs. He told me that homing pigeons are specially trained to always come home. He told me how our kites scared the little birds and sometimes they flew away and never came back. And that pigeon is my favorite. Make that dragon leave my pigeon alone. Oh. Then great big Tony Gugliani actually started to cry. I didn't know what to say. Thumb of Thumb didn't know what to say. Everett Singh, Francis Eng, and Constance Ling didn't know what to say. We all just stood there, too surprised to move. And then I got an idea. Grandfather Chin, stop! I shouted up to the rooftop. Francis Eng, Walter Hall, and Constance Ling joined in. Then even Tony and his friends started shouting. Grandfather, Grandfather, what's his name? Grandfather Chin, stop!
All at once, we started running up the hill to Mott Street. The Chinese kids, Tony Gugliani and his friends, everybody running and shouting, Grandfather Chin, stop, stop. We ran right up to our building, dashed through the door and up the stairs, still shouting, Grandfather Chin, stop, stop. By the time we got there, we were all out of breath. Grandfather, stop, pigeon, pet, Tony's, please, oh. Grandfather Chin just looked at me, then he looked at Tony, then he looked at my friends and Tony's friends. Finally, he said, are you all crazy? When we told him about Tony's pet bird, Grandfather immediately reeled in the big, beautiful dragon. My friends and I watched as the poor, frightened little homing pigeon made a couple of big, graceful circles and flew off to a cage we could see on the roof of the building a couple of blocks away. Everybody let out a big sigh of relief. And then for the first time, Tony took a good hard look at our dragon kite. Where did you buy it? We laughed and told him how we made kites out of packing crates and rice paper and how Grandfather Chin painted on the faces. I guess I'm sorry. We threw rocks at them. He paused. It was our pet birds we were worried about. We Chinese kids were sorry too, and we said so one by one. Then we had another idea. From that day on, the Chinese kids fly kites in the mornings. The Italian kids fly their birds in the afternoons. The really great thing about this is now we can admire their birds and they can admire our kites and everybody can go to the park whenever they want. The next kite Grandfather Chin made was a brand new specialty. It was big, it was silvery, it was all shiny and shimmery. The kite he made was a giant pigeon. And now when the kids in the park see it, all they say is, ooh. Oh my goodness, my friends. Sometimes we get angry with each other without even understanding what the other person is feeling. And when we talk to one another, we can learn so much about each other and about how to live peacefully and kindly with each other. So I decided that I would make my paper bag kite look kind of like Grandfather Chin's dragon. You can use stickers or drawing or do anything that you want to decorate your kite. I used a little bit of tissue paper that I had and I just cut it out and glued it on so that my kite would have some fluttery pieces. And then I drew on it too. And I punched some more holes in the back of the kite to put on some yarn for a long dragon tail. So here's what I did to decorate my kite. I wonder what you will do to decorate your kite and then take it outside and run around with the kite flying behind you. I hope you have fun making kites, my friends, and I hope you liked that story. And always learn to listen and care about how you're feeling and about how other people are feeling as well so that we can be peaceful with one another. Bye-bye.